Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. Happy Friday. It's Friday yet again and it is the last Friday of May. Can you even believe that in a couple of days 2020 is halfway over? And whew, it has been a year. It has been a challenging, frustrating year for a lot of us. And I just am flabbergasted that the year is about half over. It's crazy. I did want to let you guys know kind of how my week has been. I do have a couple of updates from my coach on the WW workshops that I wanted to share with you guys. So I just logged my weight into my app, just attended my virtual workshop. So I wanted to let you guys know a little bit on how my week went. And I have some updates as far as Weight Watchers studios, in-person meetings from my coach, at least for my area. I don't know what it will be in your area, but kind of a few updates as far as what she shared with us today in our workshop. So my week overall went really well, but this week, my friends, is my favorite time of the month. Yep, my cycle is here. It actually started early in the week. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. So it's been a little bit of a challenging week as far as feeling tired and fatigued and just blah. You guys know how that is during your cycle. My food has been pretty good because I was super hungry last week. Remember, I did have a little bit of a gain last week because I was just super hungry all week, which makes perfect sense now. But this week I struggled with motivation and feeling tired and fatigued and really wanting to do my workouts, wanting to do really much of anything. I did get in two or three workouts, I don't remember this week, including a super session on Memorial Day where I actually got in an hour and a half of jazzercise, which was incredible. I burned a ton of calories. So this week overall went pretty good considering it is my cycle and we just don't always feel our best this week. So that is kind of how my week went in a nutshell. If you're new, make sure you're subscribed. We'd love to have you stick around. Thumbs up this video, it really helps out my channel. Now let's jump into what we talked about at the virtual workshop and then I'll share my weigh-in results. workshop this week, we talked about habits and habit loops. So we kind of started off with a habit that we have that we don't even think about. That's really second nature to us. So think about that. What's a habit that you have that you literally don't think about? So I was thinking of morning routine. One habit I have is brushing my teeth. It's something I don't even think about. I get up, I just do it. Before bed, I just do it. But it wasn't always that way. As kids, it took us times practicing and really developing brushing our teeth as a habit. It wasn't something that just automatically happened. So think about a habit that you would like to have that just isn't second nature to you. And that's what we're going to talk about this week is turning that habit or want of a habit into something that you just habitually do that becomes a habit loop for you. So take a habit that you would like to have and turn it into a habit loop. The first step is identifying the habit that you want to have. The second step is having a cue, something that cues you to do that habit. And the third step of a habit loop is giving yourself a reward. So let's go a little bit more into these three steps and I'm going to share with you a habit that I want to start having be just second nature to me and how I'm going to do that using the habit loop. So the very first step is choosing a habit that you want to make into a permanent habit. Try to choose something that takes five minutes or less and something that you can actually have a cue for. So let me share mine with you. So I thought about this as I drove to the parking lot here to film this video about a habit that I would like to implement. And that habit for me is pre-tracking. Now that I am tracking both points and calories and macros, for me, tracking all of my food for the day, seeing where it fits within my points, calories, and macros, and making adjustments is something that I've been doing, not every day, but is a habit that I definitely want to develop and something I do want to be doing every single day. So for me, that habit is pre-tracking my food at the beginning of the day. So the second step in the habit loop is getting a cue, triggering a cue. So think of something that you do every single day that will trigger you or cue you to do your new habit. So for me, when I make my coffee in the morning, I always sit down 
after I've made my coffee because I like to just kind of sit and enjoy my coffee in the morning, I will pre-track my coffee. So for me, that cue is going to be sitting down and enjoying my coffee. I'm now going to pre-track my entire day in both the Weight Watchers app and the Lose It app to see where I'm falling points-wise, calorie-wise, macro-wise, and right then and there making any adjustments to meals and snacks throughout the day to get me where I want to be in all three of those areas. So I do this every day. I like to sit down, whether it's on my couch, in my office, at my kitchen table, and enjoy my cup of coffee. So that is my cue to pre-track my food. And the third step in the habit loop is rewarding yourself. We all want to do things if there's a reward at the end of it. Of course, we don't want to make the reward for this new habit to be food, but we want to do something, whether it's physical or sensational. So for me, knowing that my day is pre-tracked in my tracker and in the Lose It app, literally makes me feel happy and accomplished and also it makes me stay on track it's huge you guys if i have everything tracked for the day i don't want to waver from that because i don't want to have to go back in and retract that food and make modifications and adjustments so for me having it pre-tracked is huge helps me stay on track helps me reach my goals and is definitely a habit that i need to continue and put into place because i see much more success when i pre-track my food i stay on track I don't waver, I get my water in, I have things to look forward through throughout the day, whether that be a dessert or a dinner that I can't wait to have or a lunch. So for me, that's kind of the habit loop that I wanna create. So I want you guys to think about what is a habit that you would really, really like to have. Now it could be tracking related, it could be exercise related, maybe it's food related or water related. Think about a habit that you really, really wanna have that you know is going to help you in your journey and then put it into the habit loop. Decide on what that habit is, decide on a cue for that habit and a reward. So I absolutely love this. I have heard of the habit loop before. I've just never implemented it into my weight loss journey, but it's funny because this last week I was thinking about goals for this week and the first goal that came to mind was pre-tracking my food. So it comes perfectly in sync with what WW has for this week's topic. So that is the habit that I'm going to create starting this week. I'll share with you guys next week how that went. Was I able to create that habit? Did I pre-track? How did that go? And how did that work as far as my weight loss goes? So I think it's a great, great tool to really think about that habit loop because the better high ha quality habits we have that benefit us in our weight loss and our life and our career, the better all of those things are going to work out for us. So I think this habit loop is outstanding and I'm excited to try it this next week with my pre-tracking. So I shared with you guys kind of how my week went. I'm proud of myself for the workouts that I got in. My food was pretty good. I stayed within my calories and points most of the days. Overall, I felt like I had a really good week. It's just this darn being a girl once a month that just puts a big wrench into my weight loss plans. So when I stepped on the scale this week, I lost 0.4. So I'll take it. Normally during my cycle, I gain or stay the same. So the fact that I had a loss is a huge, huge win for me. So I am going to go ahead and put here on the screen my total pounds loss for the month of May. I'm happy with that. Considering the situation we're in as a nation, as well as just life happening this month, a couple of weeks that I struggled. I'm really happy with that overall weight loss, and I'm one step closer to reaching that 50 pounds loss in the year of 2020, which as you guys know, was my goal. So I want to talk a little bit about workshops and WW. I know that there has been a ton of rumors out there. I understand that WW had to fire, which is more of a furlough or a layoff, about 4,000 employees nationwide. And apparently they did this via Zoom. Now, I don't have all the details, nor do I really want to contribute to gossip and things that go around on social media and the internet about Weight Watchers. I love Weight Watchers. I support Weight Watchers. I understand that in this time, sometimes having to do those tough things via Zoom is just kind of what has to happen. Now, if someone is furloughed or laid off, they most likely can collect unemployment and they most likely are able to maintain their benefits and sometimes even receive a severance package. As you know, my career of choice prior to doing real estate was HR. So I'm very well versed in what happens during furloughs and laying off. So I don't know what happened with WW. And again, I'm not going to... Uh, speculate or gossip, 
But with that being said, they have also decided to close quite a few studios. Some studios are, are corporate studios and some studios are independent studios. So you would have to reach out to WW via the chat or email or call them and ask them if your particular studio is corporate or if your studio is independent and whether or not your particular studio is going to continue to be open and flourishing when this whole COVID-19 is over. So my coach today let us know that our studio isn't going anywhere. In fact, the studio I go to is one of maybe four in my town and I live in a pretty big city and it is very, very busy. All of the workshops are full. So I kind of figured mine would stick around. She also said that none of the studios in my area will even think about reopening until the month of June is over. So it looks like we have an entire another, another month of Zoom meetings. And it sounds like this is the case for a lot lot of area. So again, double check with Weight Watchers. Get on the online or your app and chat, email, call, whatever works for you and get accurate information for your area. And try to not get involved in the gossip and speculation that you're seeing on YouTube. I've seen a few videos come out already about this and they say that they know what's going on, but unless you are part of Weight Watchers, you don't know what's going on. And if you have a friend that works at Weight Watchers, I can pretty much guarantee that they had signed an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, and are not able to talk about it outside of Weight Watchers because that leads to disciplinary action up to termination. We did non-disclosure agreements all the time in HR. So I would say get the information directly from Weight Watchers if you have a question on your studios. And with that being said, I'm okay with the Zoom meetings. Do I like them as much as the in-person workshops? No, but I'm still feeling like I'm getting something out of the meeting. I'm getting a topic. I'm getting motivation. I'm still weighing myself at home. I have the accountability of that. I have the accountability of you. I also can get on my Zoom meeting a half an hour early and have a one-on-one -on -one session with one of the coaches or one of the guides. So I think that Weight Watchers is doing a great thing by allowing us to attend these Zoom meetings. Now, if the Zoom meetings aren't your thing, hang in there, you guys. The in-person meetings sound like that they will be back. As long as they're back in your area, it's just going to be a matter of time. So again, check with your local Weight Watchers via chat, email, phone, and get information that is accurate for your area. So that's kind of what she shared with us. So it sounds for me another month of Zoom meetings. I'll continue to share, of course, what we talked about here on my channel. So it's basically like you're at a workshop anyways. And that way it keeps me motivated. I can share my weight with you guys and continue to build that community here on YouTube. So if you're not part of my Facebook group, I encourage you to head over and join us. It is such a supportive place to be. We have over 15,000 members. You can ask questions, get guidance, even have a shoulder to lean on if you need it on the Facebook group. So I'd love for you to come over and join us if you're looking for that little extra bit of support. And again, if you're new, I do a weigh-in video every single Friday. So make sure you're subscribed, hit that little button and the bell so you're notified, of course, when new videos are uploaded. It really helps me if you guys give this video a thumbs up. If you like these weigh-ins, it helps my channel. It helps me know to continue to do these Friday chats and weigh-ins with you guys. So I want to hear from you guys how you're doing. How was your week? Did you gain? Did you lose? Was it what you expected? How are you doing throughout the whole pandemic and not being able to attend the in-person workshops? How is that making you feel? Of course, leave comments, questions down in the comment section. I love interacting with you guys. I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful Friday. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you guys tomorrow in my grocery haul. And I have a fun grocery haul coming out tomorrow. That includes a taste test. So definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this Friday. I love you. I hope you're doing well, staying healthy, happy, and strong. And I'll see you tomorrow in the grocery haul. Bye guys. My darling, I love you, 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 I love you.